has more encouragement than Jesus Christ. Nobody can encourage you more than he. Nobody can encourage you more than the living God. The second possibility of what can happen. And this is tough for some of us. Some of us control freaks. You got any control freaks in here? All right, good. I understand that. I relate. They may do as well as you do, even if they do it differently. Isn't that amazing how, you know, we're encouraging them, right? And they do it, and they do it well, but what do we do? No, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but it worked. No, you're doing it wrong. You know why they're, you know why they're doing it wrong? Because they're doing it their way instead of your way. <laughs> so they may do it as well, even if they don't do it your way. Encouragers, here's the, here's the point that I don't want you to miss. I'm almost done, by the way. Encouragers don't must never be too rigid. Don't be too rigid. Alright? Just don't be too rigid. My goodness. Number three. And here's the third possibility. They may do better than you. It's interesting that Paul would later become the dominant missionary of the early church. Barnabas encouraged Paul, and then Paul started taking on a greater role. That happens. So what do you do next? If that happens, and they understand this, that if you are an encourager, and you're encouraging someone, that role may change. It could be that you have done everything you can do when that person is concerned and you need to move on to somebody else, which brings me to the last one. We talked about lean, now we look at last. Last. And the last place we see Barnabas is in Acts 15, verse 39. They had such a sharp disagreement. This is Paul and, and Barnabas. By the way, this is not a happy thing here. It's not ideal. But I want you to know that God can, God can work in our mess, okay? We mess up, we do things, but sometimes God has a plan that goes beyond that. They had a sharp disagreement, so sharp a disagreement, they parted company. So what did Barnabas say? Barnabas say, I said, I'm coming. <coughs> no, that's not what he said. It was all about a guy by the name of John Mark. And Bar Barnabas, true to himself, saw something in John Mark that Paul didn't see in John Mark. He saw something in Paul that the church didn't see. Now he sees something in John Mark that Paul doesn't see. And what does he do? The Bible says right here, Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, and the story goes on. My point, encouragers don't quit. If a door closes here, over here, you go find an open one over there. When Barnabas' work with Paul ended, he took Mark under his wing. And what happened? What happened to us? Mark ended up writing a gospel. What else? Mark eventually, this is crazy, but Mark ended up being for Paul what Barnabas used to be. Mark became an encourager to Paul. What did he say at one point to Timothy? He said, Timothy, oh yeah, bring Mark with you. Or if he's good for me. So there's just a few examples, just not all of them, but just a few examples of being an encourager. I don't want you, you can walk out of here looking for encouragement, that's fine. We all need encouragement. But we need to go beyond disciples to being disciples and beyond being encouraged to being encouragers. And so when you walk out of here today, ask yourself this question, am I an encourager? Number two, who needs my encouragement. Number three, and this is a different order on the screen, why, why should I encourage? Well, let me just simply say, do not make it, do not do it to make yourself feel better, but to help someone. And then finally, when, when will I begin? When will I begin to encourage? Who is it? Who is it that God wants me to encourage? You know, God has a plan. God, I don't know what his plan for you tomorrow is and the next day, but he does. And so I want you to, as you go forth from this place, I want you to look for someone to encourage and do it.
You know, if I find myself doing this a lot now, you probably do too. You know, we do have a labor shortage. Actually, we don't have a labor shortage. We got all kinds of labor. We just don't have anybody to do it. You know, nobody wants to work anymore, it seems like. And we go into places and it's long wait, empty shelves and all this kind of, why? Because we can't find enough people to work. I do not complain to the manager. I do not complain to the employees when I have to wait a long time in line or if something's not right, you know why? Because they don't need the discouragement. They're working. I will go up to somebody when I'm unhappy and I don't care what it is, I'll go up and say, you know what? Thank you for working. Thank you for being here. I remember when COVID first hit, you couldn't go in anywhere to eat. It was all drive throughs I drove to McDonald's one day and I got my order and I said, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. I wanted my Big Mac. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it doesn't take much, folks. Who do you encourage? In church? Church? Finally, Hebrews 10, 23 to 25 says this. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not meet, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. You say, well, why should I come to church today? I'll tell you why. If for no other reason. It encourages me when you come. And there may be somebody else that it encourages when they see you here. Because you might be the person that day that God will use and say, hey, they're hurt. <coughs> Encourage them. They have a need. Pray with them. Everybody say, Encourager. Now can count yourselves encouraged to be encouraged. Let's stand. Yeah.